Yeah, right now it's racing, Troy and Ariel, off to the east. As a matter of fact, about to clear the coast in the next five or ten minutes, and we could say see you later to this thing because it's overstayed its welcome and then some. It's been around for two hours, tracking across the entire southern part of the state from around Keene over to Portsmouth. So it took that long to move through. However, that time was about two plus hours. And keep in mind, moving 30, 40, even 50 miles per hour at times, that's why it has actually moved to this location by around uh, 7 o'clock this evening. And a lot of lightning showing up still right along the 95 corridor, right over um, the Piscataqua River as it tracks to the east 35, 40 miles per hour earlier in the afternoon or late afternoon and now trucking at 45 to 50 miles per hour with a core of hail. Not as impressive as it was a short time ago. You can see the real bright pinks back in here. That's when the core of the hail was the most intense. Now it's more of a smaller hail situation with intense rain, lightning, and on the leading edge, a potential for some wind gusts of 30 to 40, even 50 miles per hour. Now, if there's any rotation left over from this particular cell, well, it would be sitting back to the east right over Portsmouth. So this is a view of the velocity scans once again from gray main in this bright green indicates motion up towards the radar site in right around Newcastle pressing down to the south. So if we were to see any rotation, it would be right in here and again moving offshore in the next five to 10 minutes. Now, in addition to that one, there is another storm to the north triggering a severe thunderstorm warning or it did and it's still there right around Berlin until 715. So that's this system around Berlin uh, all the way through success and this one showed a little sign of rotation uh, in the last five or ten minutes but in the last few the rotation not as well defined but having said that still packing a punch with a lot of rain you notice one thing missing is lightning so kind of an odd feature here where you just don't have a lot of lightning and you definitely don't have a lot of large hail with this one. The main threat is for torrential downpours and some gusty winds possibly rotating, but again, not all that impressive. So that's the storm. We're going to kind of recap here and wrap up our coverage shortly, but just a, a quick recap on the storm exiting the coast in the next few minutes. Uh, you're seeking shelter. There's no additional action needed for that part of the state in the next 15, 20 minutes is again, if you're in it, you're in it. And if you're not in it, it's gone. So that's the good news with that cell. And the one to the north is going to be in western Maine in the next few moments. There are still numerous downpours and some lightning from the Mount Washington Valley into the heart of the Lakes region and back into southern parts of Vermont. So that's basically been the story. We'll send it back over to Jackie for just a quick moment, quick recap on this, and then we'll uh, tend to wrap up programming shortly. Jackie? Yeah, thanks, Mike. I mean, we've been tracking this since it first moved into New Hampshire in Cheshire County and prompted that first tornado warning. But as Mike mentioned, this is now moving offshore. You can see where the rotation is pushing out of Portsmouth now and out over the water. So perhaps not out of the question, there may be a water spout sighting out of this if this rotation can really tighten up a little bit, but overall the biggest threat has now diminished, which is good news. This continues to move away, even though that warning is still up for a little bit and we have that second warning up north, but we will wrap things up here.